So in our last talk, um, we just heard all about the problems of working with, uh, working with licenses and code. And um, what this talk is going to start to do is start to paint the picture of how we can finally get to the stage where we can make the compliance information automated and make it a lot easier and a lot less manual going forward. So our challenge is how to automate this information. Um, we've got two different points, right? We've got um, in FOSS projects, are actually in a lot of commercial projects, products today. And it's the commercial entities that generally care about making sure that there's accurate summaries of licensing. The people who are developing the software want to make sure that they, you know, what their intentions are, they'll put in. But how it gets put in, what they care, you know, what it's actually there in the file um, is right at the moment in time it was put in, but doesn't always follow over time and isn't accurate necessarily over time. We've been um, finding that someone will contribute some files to a project under one license, and then the project, those files will move to another project. So, you know, you, someone may say, okay, see, um, see license.txt file at the top for understanding what the license is. Well, they've moved it into another file that doesn't have a license.txt file, it has a copying file. So you have all these really interesting games to play to try to really understand what the licenses are. And so what we need to know is, you know, is the source we're working with, um, what, how good is the licensing in it? Is there a quality of it? And we need tools, specifically open source tools, to support the tracking of this code. Companies can, you know, pay money to Black Duck or Palomino Palomino or so forth, and to people who have businesses for this stuff. And they, but for developers' perspective, working with this with open source seems to be the right way. So right now, um, our commercial tools um, are focused on product development and auditing code bases. And they've got limited support for helping developers um, track the license changes as they develop the code. Our open source tools also are mostly focused on auditing existing code bases manually and summarizing the information. Of the, the tools that are out there, Physology has been around the longest and is what we're basing some of this work on. So we need to give a way to get the open source projects to have machine detectable accurate licensing information and be able to keep it up to date as the software changes. That's sort of the goal. And so we're sort of making some progress now. With any hard problem, you have to start breaking it down, okay? And the steps are, we need to be able to accurately identify the license associated with the file. Um, some developers like to just say it's just at the project level. Well, that's been showing more and more to be a luxury we no longer have. Files move between projects, and tracking things down over time um, becomes a very, very manually intensive operation if you're trying to discover the base root cause of things. We need to have something at the command line tool to summarize the licensing in a source file, okay? Um, you've got, be able to, you know, you want to be able to do the reps and things like that to understand what's going on. You need to be able to accurately summarize license associated with every project at the time the project's built. Depending if there's multiple options and conditions, there may be implications of that. You've got to be able to share the summary results of the license information with the project with others. And you have to have some curve command line tool that can summarize the file level licensing information for a project so you know, is it a single license? Are there multiple licenses? What is the story here? So, and then, for this to really be effective over time, it's got to be into CI loops. You've got to have it in build environments so that you can keep up as it goes along. So at the very start of SPDX was to address parts of this. And at the time, it was focused mostly on getting a standard together so that we could um, accurately identify the licenses associated with the file. Well, the SPDX license list has got 300 licenses with standard identifiers, and you can put a one-line comment into each file and um, identify it without too much pain to, from a developer perspective. Um, command line tools, open question. We need to be able to accurately summarize the licenses associated with a project every time the project is built. Well, if you can generate an SPDX21 document for each build of a project, that has a signing of the files, signing of the project itself, 
and you have all the information there so you know if things have changed from revision to revision. So being able to generate the SPDX document can address that. Um, being able to share the results um, with different consumers. Most of the um, developers I know would prefer to see things in a tag value format or more the Linux side anyhow. Most of the Java guys prefer the RDFA and um, most of the lawyers prefer a spreadsheet. Um, with the SPDX, we've been very careful to preserve so you can translate back and forth between all formats and look at the information. So you sort of go, well, SPDX file. Well, actually, is it an RDFA? Is it a tag or is it a spreadsheet? And if it's not the one you want, there's tools out there to convert it. And then having this command line tool is also an open question. So obviously we want open source tools and all open source builds upon prior open source. So we're starting here with the latest physiology. Uh, which I will stress is in testing mode right now. We're trying to get ready for a release, and if anyone wants to go and help test it, that would be very welcome. Um, the source is up there. And it handles, it's a, for those, is everyone familiar with Physology in this room? Who's not? Okay. <laughs> then Physology is a scanning tool that will basically take a file, or take you pointed at a file or a pro, like a, pro, a project, and it will scan through with your choice of, multiple, of one or multiple scanners and look for um, specific expressions that match licenses that are common for finding licenses. And then that's, so it's got Nomos and Monk and Ninka, which are the three scanners that you can choose from based on you know, where you're, where you're, um, what you're sort of looking for, how strict and things like that. Each of them has different heuristics. So you've got different ones to play with um, depending on what you're looking for. Um, and how strict you want to be. And then it um, basically gives you an interface um, if you're working with it interactively and lets you recognize things and assign things and effectively go through a clearing process to say, okay, I've gone through all these codes, I've recognized everything. It makes it easier for you to sort of manually look at um, a project and then generate out um, the information so you've got confidence, you can ship it, you know what the licenses are. Um, it, with the release of the 3.1, well, in the 3.1 version, it's now able to generate tag value. And um, so you can get a file license list. And, but however, it does need to have some better heuristics for the command line side. The CP2 FOSS um, needs to better be able to automate the decisions that are going on. The interactive works well, but this is where we're sort of in an area to focus on for us. There's also the SPDX tools and that lets you convert between formats. They're out there today. Um, and mostly it's just to basically validate that you actually have a valid SPDX file. And um, one of the things that's looking like it's needed is we probably need to get something that takes an SPDX file and just summarizes the licensing information. There are other research projects out there that are saying, is this licensing consistent? Does this work well? Um, but so there's always things you can add. And then the other open source tool we've been looking at for this is um, the Alba system, which basically takes and builds a, root file, a Linux root file system based on Debian packages. And it needs to be able to have an accurate summary and status, statistics of license each time it does a build root file system. So this is part of trying to pull all these pieces together that are out there and see if we can get something useful. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague. So uh, let me give you a very quick information about LB itself. It's not a distribution. It's not a tool to build a distribution. There are a lot of tools out there to build distributions, Yocto, PTX Desk, whatever the name, you name it. So the, the problem for a, a lot of companies, especially smaller companies, is once you build your stuff with Yocto, you become a distributor. That means you are responsible for tracking um, uh, for bug fixes, for security bugs, and, and all this kind of stuff. So we took another approach and said we want to have a tool where we can leverage a well-maintained, uh, an existing and well-maintained distribution, and that was Alba does. Um, it builds Debian-based root file systems for embedded system. It you get a it generates a Debian-based uh, development system matching the target for application developers. It's highly customizable. 
and it's fully reproducible. Uh, there is the link to the, to the project homepage. It's open source. It's written in Python. Um, here is the quick overview. You have an XML description of the project. That means that's all the packages and the rules. You can downsize after, after packaging when you generate your final disk image. You get the packages from uh, either the Debian repositories or your private repositories. You can integrate your applications in a separate repository. It generates the application development kit and images, the rebuild CD, the source code CD, and the licenses file. So uh, here is a slightly better overview because you have your, your um, customized Debian package pool. That's basically what the application developers create. That's the official Debian pools or a mirror. And then everything is, is converted into the target system, the developer system, and the various surrounding information. So now, license reports. Um, LB generates a license report today uh, by parsing the Debian package information. That's uh, not really accurate. And it doesn't give us a lot of statistic or no statistical information about the accuracy of what we are uh, uh, doing. So there's no SPDX support. There is an SPDX branch which generates the existing as, uh, information in SPDX form format, but that doesn't help for the other things like statistics. So, okay. Uh, so we looked into uh, integrating SPDX generation into the build process, but generating the SP SPDX information f by scanning the source files. Every time you build a root file system is pretty much uh, 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 it's too time consuming. It's really overkill. And um, so we thought about, because the Debian uh, source code doesn't change every day, we thought about downloading regenerated SPDX files to be the solution. So we wrote an, uh, an SPDX generator. It looks for the nightly Debian update, feeds the updates into Fosology, generates the SPDX file, generates statistics, and uploads the SPDX and the statistics to a public server. Mm -hmm. So uh, Fosology is not really optimized for automated workloads. We ha had to write quite some wrappery. It's pretty ugly. Um, we need better. Uh, heuristics for automatic conclusions, which are not there yet. The generator is work in progress, and we really have to clean it up before we show it to the world. It's horrible. Um, the generator service, though, we are going to provide that continuously. Um, so if, we, if you create a root file system, you get the binary CD-ROM ISO, the source CD-ROM ISO, your image, and now you get, as, an, as a separate uh, information, the SPDX. Uh, it's 7-zip because we, uh, there are people working on Windows and they hate turbos. 7-zip works both on, on Linux and Windows, so we're happy to do that. Um, so, OK. The LB integration for the, for the SPDX Towerball generation is available in the LB Git repository. There's an LB SPDX branch now. Um, and the repository of, Debian, of, of the SPDX repository is available at our, uh, at our homepage. It looks like, let me find a browser. It looks like a Debian, uh, like a Debian pool. It has the same directory structure, so you very, it's analogous, where you find the, the source files in the same directory name, mm -hmm. uh, path name is, is um, the SPDX and the statistical information. So, no, there was something else uh, I wanted to show. Uh, we generate statistics that's um, over there. Okay. That's uh, license statistics. Uh, that's uh, Linux, uh, what, uh, Linux kernel 3.16.39. So I ran a, a, a rather recent kernel. Their numbers are very similar. So 
Uh, yeah, that's stupid. <laughs> yeah, okay, it's, it should be 40. Okay, that's silly. <laughs> uh, but that was me re reformatting the, the, the spreadsheet. Uh, so we have 1,400 uh, references to GPLv2. We have 10,000 uh, uh, references to GPLv2+. Plus. So that's 40.8% and 90.6%. 90, 90 so the, the files on the, on the web page have actually the real numbers. So uh, the other, where is the, where is the other file? No, the, yeah, okay. The, there is the SPDX file which, which is generated. It contains all the, the file names, so it's, that's what basically comes out of Fossology. And then um, it generates another statistical information. Um, we just use the MIME types which are available in Fossology, which are not really nice to read, but it's pretty clear. It's text uh, XC, so the C files, C ADA files, make files, assembler files, and whatever. We have actually C++ files in the kernel. Um, so you see the, number, the total number of files. That's the total files in, the, in that kernel repository. That's the files which have actually license references in them. So that we have, okay, that's 63%. Uh, um, we have total license references. 34,000, that means we have more references than files with references. That's because we have a lot of files which are dual license. MIT and GPL or uh, BSD and GPL and, and whatever. Um, and now here we come to the C files. We see we have uh, 34,000 34, C files and 26,000 have. A license reference in it, which is machine identifiable, so that's roughly 75%. I think the current kernel code has it close to 80. So it, it, we are adding more files which have license references, but nobody cleans up the old ones which do not have, uh, which do not have. So we are trying to to get that sorted. So stupid thing. Okay, that's it. Questions? No questions. Sure. Um, not a question, hopefully a useful observation. Uh, you asked about tools that will scan a source tree uh, and tell you what licenses are in it. Um, uh, I needed to do this for Mozilla. Uh, I confess I tried using Fossology and couldn't understand it. So I didn't use I Fossology. I can't understand that. Yes. <laughs> I hope that maybe there are some people here who can understand that I didn't understand Fossology. Um, but so what I did was I wrote something called SLIC, which stands for Speedy License Checker, which looks through a tree of files uh, and tells you the SPDX identifiers for uh, every file in there using um, various yeah, but regex magic, and it's on GitHub at github.com slash jerv slash slick. Yeah, but the, anyone prob wants to play with the it. problem is if, if, if you have SPDX license identifiers, it's easy. No, 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 it if doesn't just extract have. them from the files. It reads the files and works out the identifiers from the license text. Yes. So it has a big that's, database of different basic, sorts of license basic, text. That's basically we'll, what, what Fosso right. Fosology yes, does as well. For those, who, for those who can't use Fosology, yeah. I'm just saying there is another alternative out there. Right. Yeah, there's a, quite a bunch of tools out there, and uh, we need probably one tool set which works. <laughs> Can I do first? And then? No, okay. So, uh, pardon? Okay. Um, so, people are consistently bad at kind of putting licenses at their GitHub repositories and things like that. So, 
do you see a chance that we move to a world where you just have your license specified in the file and then some automated tool will in the end kind of generate a project license which is then usually not just one license but a combination of more right. uh, automatically? Yeah, that's, I mean, that's the goal. So if you, if you look at the statistics, and that's the, one of the reasons why we wanted to generate the statistics is basically you can uh, feed statistics into, you take the package statistics and figure out how bad a project actually is, and then you can create shit lists, public shit lists, which works very well. So people get their act together and clean it up. So that's, that's one of the things. But, Today, people do not have metrics. They even do not know how bad their, their, their code base is in terms of licensing because nobody tells them and they have no tools to look at and they don't care. But um, if, if when distros start to care about that and say, okay, here is the information, we're not longer accepting uh, uh, projects with, with, uh, with, with uh, non-specified licensing issues and whatever. So please get your act together and, and clean it up. So that might help, but we need the tools so, so people packaging uh, packages or whatever can actually get numbers out of it and get a, get a reasonable information how bad it is. People want to see, um, one of the things you should do is, on the link we're giving, you've got, literally got the entire Debian distribution with the first pass of what the SPDX tools are generating. And so if you've got specific packages you're interested or you care about, go look at it. Yep. So there was another question over there. Yeah. Um, I was wondering whether these tools could work with uh, pre-compiled or binaries. Uh, but could, could, can they scan or do they do they have functionality like this? Can Forsology see that for what you are using FFM bag, but you all it already compiled? No, no, not at okay. the moment. So that's you, a, you that's really a different class of analysis. We are okay. we are looking at really source code. That's okay. what. We, that's. <laughs> yeah, there are there are scanners for binary uh, uh, matches out there, but that's a totally different playground. There's a question behind you. Thanks. Um, a question as a lawyer. What I'm interested in, as far as I get your tool, it's just as good as the people who maintaining the directories in terms of the license. For example, if I just say I got a GPL v3 third party component here, but I missed to um, add the copyright information, um, the, the SPDX will not make any binary search and tell me who the copyright owner is, right? In the SPDX file, the copyright owner information can be recorded based on what it finds in the file at the source level. Yeah. And that's about it. Okay. Right. Thanks. I mean, there are a lot of gaps in the tools, but we have to really use them and then uh, fix them. See it? <coughs> More questions? Okay. No, there's one. The last minute. So you said that you were looking for a command line tool that did something, but then, like, there are a lot of command line tools that do different things. So what exactly is the tool that is missing? What should this tool do that all the existing tools don't do? So, so first of all. Having a proper command line driven interface for, for continuous integration checking. Um, none of the tools I'm aware of actually does that. There, are, there have been a, uh, approaches for Yocta to do that, uh, but the doc, what, what is this? Do Sox V2 try to do that? Yeah, they try to do that, but it's, it's, it's not really useful and it's unmaintained as far as I know. Um, Phosology is really uh, GUI interactive uh, uh, driven. It's, it's developed for, for uh, manual license uh, um, clearing. And we can reuse parts of it. So it's, it's stuff. And then, of course, there are um, other things missing, like uh, specific heuristics uh, to conclude license information. And then, uh, so there are a lot of bits and pieces out there 
we have to connect them together and have feed them into a framework which actually is usable for all kind of workloads so that we don't have 55 different scanners out there which all give you 100 different results. That's the state of the union at the moment. If you try 10 scanners, you really get 12 results. <laughs> well, with that, we're out of time. Thank you very much, Kate and Thomas. Thank you.